Monthly planning and I just don't get along. I find it really hard to deal with the fact that any given month doesn't have the same amount of time. Not only do they have a different number of days, but then because of this, we don't have the same distribution of how many of each day we have. We have a different number of weekends and weekdays, which means it can be hard to predict how much we can actually accomplish, especially when the way that you can use your time on any given day of the week does differ. Not only this, but because the months also start on different days of the week, it means that the start, end, and middle point of the month fall on different days, and if there are specific processes that you want to do at those points in time, it can be kind of hard or unrealistic to do these, depending on which day of the week they fall on. To combat this, I've decided to ditch monthly planning and go to using quarters and cycles to split my year instead. These nice, even blocks of time are helping me set better or more realistic expectations about what I can do in any given period. They're helping me stay more mindful about how time is passing, and they also come with built-in reflections reflection, check-in, or reset points for myself. In this video, we're going to look at what this system is, why I moved to it, and how you can use it to help organize your life. As a general overview, like I mentioned, I use quarters and cycles for my planning. Each cycle is a four-week block, and then each of the quarters has three of those cycles in it. If we do some quick math, this actually only gives us 48 weeks, so what about the other four weeks that we have in a typical 52-week year? These are what I call reset weeks, and I assign one of those weeks to each of the quarterly blocks, placing it at the end of that quarter. That final week of each quarter is an intentional time to get cool, calm, and collected for the upcoming quarter. I put in things like goal setting time, decluttering, anything else I need to give me that fresh slate feeling. We'll talk more about what this looks like compared to a regular yearly schedule, but how did this system come to be? Many moons before I'd even thought about the concept of cyclic planning, which is the name that I give my system, I had been thinking about the fact that 12 months in a year was just kind of dumb. It just made more sense to have 13 months and have them each be 28 days. Again, doing some quick math here, 13 months with only 28 days in them only actually gives us 364 days rather than 365, but maybe that last day could just be like a bonus rest kind of day. But sadly, no, that is not how our yearly calendar is structured. Instead, we have January, March, May, July, August, October, and December, all with 31 days, which is distinctly not divisible by seven, so you don't get a perfect number of weeks within that. And then we have April, June, September, and November, all with 30, which you know, keen observers might also note it is not divisible by seven, and you again don't get a perfect number of weeks in that. And then we just have February, who's just kind of an oddball doing its own thing, either with 28 or 29 days, year dependent. I already have a really hard time with appreciating how much work I can actually get done in any period of time. So if we're considering this as a month, not all months are going to be created equal. Yes, there are things going on outside of the calendar structure that can dictate how much we can do, but if you're throwing in the fact that not all of them have the same number of days, not all of them start on the same day of the week, and thus we don't have the same number of weekend versus weekdays, there might be more Mondays than Tuesdays or whatever else, it can just be really difficult to figure out how much time do I realistically have to do the things I want to do. Really, it just left me feeling quite frustrated. When you're trying Trying to set goals for yourself and figure out how much you can get done in any period of time, each month had to be dealt with on a case-by-case -case basis. I couldn't rely on having the same amount of time available to me because of the differing number of days and the differing number of each weekday. As said, yes, the amount of available time is going to be impacted by other things as well, but this just felt like playing everything on hard mode. The other thing that would trip me up was appreciating the passage of time. So we'd get to the 10th of any month, for most months, and we're about a third of the way through the month. But then, before you know it, it's the 15th, and now we're halfway through the month. If you blink, now it's the 20th, and we're two-thirds of the way through the month. I really just wanted a system where each of my months had the same number of days. They would also all start on the same day of the week, which meant they all had the same number of Mondays, and Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. This would just help me be better able to predict how much time I had available, and thus how much I could get done in any given month. In the same way that your week does not have to start on a Monday, or even a Sunday, you can 
started on whatever day you want, why not make it so that my months aren't tied to the calendar? As we talked about before, I'd previously thought about the benefits of a 13 month year, where each of those 13 months has four weeks in it. So what if I tried leaning into that system? Now notably, this isn't the system that I went with, with the main reason here being there are still things in my life, ones that are outside of my control, that operate on a monthly basis. If I did go with the 13 blocks of 28 days, then we'd have a year that looks kind of like this. While the start and end of the year looks fairly similar to a regular calendar, the part in the middle is where it gets a little bit messy. While I still want the benefits of the nice even blocks of time, I wanted to balance this with not having a month, quote quote, start in the middle of a regular calendar month. I also noted that when it comes to my goal setting and planning, I like to do this quarterly. This is a pretty important part to consider because this is the main system System that I use to get the things done in my life that I want to do. 13 isn't easily dividable into quarters, unless you want to take one of those blocks and divide it into four separate weeks. This is how the system I do use came to be. Rather than having 13 four week cycles, I went with having 12 and four additional separate weeks. The 12 cycles were divided into four quarters, so three cycles within each quarter, and then the leftover weeks got added to the end of each of those quarters, with one week going to each of those. These weeks, which I call reset weeks, would be an intentional time for goal setting and getting ready for the next quarter. Reset weeks also act as a way to realign with a regular calendar structure, along with the other benefits they offer. Speaking about benefits though, why would we want to do cyclic planning? For me, it's mainly about having the same amount of time each month, and also having the same number of each day each month. Those are the two main considerations for me and why I moved to this system. But one of the things that I find I struggle with is I'm not really good at paying attention to the passage of time or having an appreciation of how much time I have have left in a period. Moving to the system has just better enabled me to grasp where I'm at in any given period, whether that's a cycle, a quarter, or the year as a whole. On this note, because each of the cycles is four weeks long, it means that each of those weeks is a quarter of your cycle. So when we get to the end of week one, we're 25% of the way through. When we get to the end of week two, we're 50% of the way through. When it comes to thinking about each cycle within the quarter, when we're one cycle down, we're a third of the way through, another cycle down, we're two thirds of the way through. Of course, it depends on how you're doing the math and whether you include reset week. Typically, I don't because reset week is its own intentional block of time for other things. Another benefit of using cyclic planning is when it comes to my journal setup. Because each of my cycles is gonna be the same amount of time, I can just use the same calendar structure for every single month. I don't have to worry about having a week that's only three days or four days long. I know that my calendar is always gonna span the same number of weeks, so I don't have to try and fit a six week calendar into a structure that's really only got enough space for five. Because each of those calendar layouts ends up being the same kind of structure, I get very familiar with how much space I have for other things like decoration or task lists. Another benefit is that it aligns really well with my goal setting system. Because I like to do goal setting quarterly and also having that reset week gives me that intentional time to do that review, refresh and select new goals for the quarter coming up. It just really lends itself to the system I was already using. Some other key parts of my goal setting include reviews at the middle month and end of month points. Now sometimes, in a previous monthly structure, those review days would fall in the middle of the week, when I just didn't realistically have enough time to do a proper reflection. Nowadays, my mid-cycle and end-of-cycle reviews though are always on the weekend, meaning I can carve out the time that I need to do a proper job of them. Another benefit of this system is also the reset weeks themselves, not so much for, you know, goal setting and all of that, but just being an intentional time to give myself that fresh slate feeling. I love the feeling of new year, like, you know, entering the new period of time and getting excited about our goals and all of the potential that a new year has to offer. I now get a smaller version of that feeling at multiple points within the year. Of course, while there are benefits, and I think that the benefits outweigh the possible annoyances, it's good to note the fact that those do exist as well. One of these could be that the new cycle does not necessarily start at the start of a new month or the start of a new year. For instance, my first cycle for 2025 is going to start on the 30th of December, so my New Year's Day is actually in the prior year. There are also going to be things in my life that are still going to happen on a monthly basis. 
for instance, our channel memberships. That one is a monthly charge, so all of the perks I offer come through on a monthly basis for members. Certain bills that we get charged come through monthly, though not my phone. That one's a 28 day cycle, so it fits perfectly with cyclic planning. Another possible pain point is considering how you set up for reset week. Because the reset week is separate from any of the cycles, it's just, you know, at the end of the quarter to get cool, calm and collected for the next quarter, do we include that in our setup for cycle three in any quarter? Or do we just make it its own separate thing? Now this one would be very much up to you. Sometimes I make it fully separate, sometimes I just tack it on to the end of the last cycle. And while it could be considered a pain point or potential negative, I don't really think of it as being too much of a hassle. Another possible annoyance is that because we do not have a perfectly divisible calendar, you know, 365 is not divisible by seven, it does mean that every few years we're gonna end up with a bonus week. I haven't quite decided what I'm gonna do with bonus week. I'll probably just do double reset week and call it like my ultra reset. But effectively, this is kind of similar to leap years, except it's an entire week, not just an extra day. It also depends on what day of the week you're starting your cycles on as to when that will happen. As said, I think that the benefits outweigh the possible annoyances. So how do we actually do cyclic planning? Well, the first step is to decide what day of the week you want your cycles to start on. I start mine on a Monday because I like a Monday start calendar, Monday start weekly. You can start yours on Sunday if you want, or you could start it on any other day of the week. Lean into whatever works with your schedule and structures. The next thing to consider is when you want your first cycle of the year to start. Now this is going to depend on what day of the week you've decided to start your cycles on, but I like to pick the first week in the year that has the most days for that year. So for instance, if you have a week that has either three days from the last year and four days for the new year, that would be my first week for my year. For 2025, my first cycle is going to start on the 30th of December because we only have two days from the previous year, or 2024, and five days for 2025. If I was going with a Sunday start calendar, I would still pick the same week because we'd have three days from 2024 and four days from 2025. From here, we just need to calculate our date ranges. So what date range do we have for cycle one, cycle two, cycle three, the quarter as a whole, when is reset week? If you didn't want to do the math yourself, we do have a free downloadable template, which you can get in the description box. That one's just part of our free resource library, so jump over there to nab that one. Once you know your date ranges though, then it's just time to get your planner set up. Instead of drawing out a regular monthly calendar, now you're just drawing out cyclic calendars instead. I've really loved using cyclic planning this year, and it's been exciting to see other people in our community get involved with it as well. If you wanted to see how other people are using cyclic planning in their own planning and journaling systems, jump over to our free community discord. We have a section in there specifically dedicated to cyclic planning and sharing our layouts and tips about how we're using it. And we'd absolutely love for you to join us. There's a link in the description box, or you can use the QR code on screen here. If you wanted to see what cyclic planning looked like in my journal this year though, then this video is the next one to check out. In that one, we flip through the pages from my everyday journal, so you can see what kind of structures and layouts I use for my cyclic planning. So click or tap on that one and I'll see you over there.